But circles, this is our standard form where we've got uh, x minus some value and we're going to square that quantity then we're going to add it to y minus some value and square that and that will equal r squared. Now if we're not familiar with r, r is the radius and since that number will be squared if we want to find it we're going to square root that number. All right. So in a circle, which we can see in this diagram right here, the center, as it turns out, and this is just from standard form, comes from whatever value we're subtracting from x, that's the h value, which would be in part of this ordered pair, which is where the center is. And then y minus the k value, that's the k value, that's the y value in, which is the center of the circle. And radius is just from any point on the circle to the center of the circle. We're well, usually pretty familiar with that by this time. So. Now the nice thing about this stuff is if we don't ever have perfect squares in an equation, we can force it to be a perfect square, completing the square. So, well, first let me show this, okay? So for example, if if it was x plus 3 squared and we had some other stuff in this, right, then what would the h value be in this case? Sorry? It's close, right? Now remember this, this has to be minus the h. So how do we change a plus into a minus? We would end up subtracting a negative. So this is the same as x minus negative 3 like this. Some people like the parentheses there, some don't. I don't know if you do or not, but there's that. And this just indicates that h would be a negative 3. It's just an example, again. And it would work the same for the y as well. So completing the circle, just as a quick review, if we had x squared plus, I don't know, 4x, that'd be, that'd be pretty nice. And then it was equal to 3, right? Would have to add the square of half of this b value. So, would, But we have to do it to both sides, so we can't forget that either. So we'd have to add it not only to the left side of that equal sign, but also to the right. So 4 halves squared. And we end up being able to make this x plus whatever this value is inside the parentheses, which would be 2, and then that's equal to 3 plus 2 squared, so 7. Now that's, sorry, that's that quantity squared right there. Okay, that's just a quick review. Um, so a con conic section is just a really fancy way of saying a cone, and then we're going to cut it, right? So we get our ninja blade, and we slice it this way, then what happens? Well, you can see the resulting shape, and this is just the line that's created from that cross section. It's now a parabola. And we can cut these in all kinds of fancy ways. If we cut it straight across, we get a circle. If we make that angled like this, nice little ellipse. Some people call these ovals. Depends on how nerdy you really want to be. And if you cut it straight down like this, then you'd end up with two parabolas. Para apparently is one, so hyper is two, two or more, apparently. Maybe some of you guys know better than that uh, than I do on that. So if you do, that's fine too. Hyperbola is just where you've got the two parabolas facing each other, okay? All right, the graph of this equation is a circle. Thank you for that. Now we don't have to wonder anymore. Find the center and the radius and then graph the circle. So first of all, let's identify that standard form of a circle. There we go. So that would be the standard form, right? Now in these two quantities right here, we're adding three. What we really want to see is minus something, okay? So kind of like we did in that example before, and it was plus 3. That was not necessarily on purpose. We can change this to x minus a negative 3. 
I'll change the color of that. X minus a negative 3. And we're going to square that. And then we'll add Y minus, this one also would be a negative 3. And then we can square this. And this would equal, if we wanted the actual radius, because 4 is the radius that's already been squared. So as it turns out, we can square root that 4 and get it to, we can show it that it's squared so that it is the 4, right? Now this tells us the center for the circle, which h value is this negative 3 here. And the k value is this negative 3 here. Now I, I did do those arrows on purpose because they won't always be the same. And they are, those negative 3's are coming from very specific places. This allows us now to draw a point at that center, negative 3, negative 3, which I get to be this point right here. Alright, we got a radius of 2 because it was the radius that was squared. So we know that we're going to have a radius that is 2. Alright, radius of 2. So um, it's hard to go in diagonals of 2 because then we're looking at Pythagorean theorem kind of garbage. Uh, I'm just going to go 2 in every direction that I know is 2 units away. So in other words, I'm going to start here at the center. I, I can go exactly 2 units to the left and make a point there. I can go two units to the right as well and make that point. I can also go two units down. See, I'm just using the grid to find these, these four points. Now, these four points are on the circle, right? Because the radius is the distance from the center to the outside of the circle. So from here, all I've got to do is draw a circle. So here we go.